Okay, to start with the exercise, you will need to access to this file, which is in Canvas. It's called basic.zip. Uh, Save the file and uncompress in any folder you want to work uh, with this project. When you open the folder, you would see it is only one simple file. This is a um, Adobe After Effects uh, project. And what we have here is just a very simple exercise which uh, will consist on understanding the different keyframes that we have to use in this program. Let's start with the most simple uh, of these uh, keyframes, which are the spatial paths uh, when applying to keyframes. So if you see uh, in this keyframe position windows, just press the space bar. So think about this, what is the difference? Let's uh, get closer to this with the scroll of the mouse. Okay, here. What is the difference between these different um, uh, squares? Yes, you are right. The difference is the, the path, the spatial path that each one of them is doing when playing this animation, which is not even three seconds, it would be uh, uh, more or less two and a half. So uh, if you selecting one, you can see the difference and it's also indicated in the name of the, uh, of the file, of the object. Linear U shape. Okay, this is the, the path that the, the keyframe uh, does okay uh, s shape opposite roller coaster and this is a 3d which is different from the others because in this case if you see the position uh, you would see three values x y and z and you need to activate this which is the 3d layer um, option let's duplicate the one of these compositions just to play a little for example, this one, and then uh, select Ctrl D. Alternative, you can duplicate that, just selecting that, and then edit, duplicate. But as I say, just Ctrl D would do. So here we have a copy, and when I talk this copy, I'm going to get rid of the others. I could uh, just uh, hide all of them, or I could, as I'm going to do, delete them. Okay, because I have a copy, I don't really uh, care about this. So when you uh, select again the object, you see that there are two different keyframes, one at the beginning and the other is the end of the animation. Common sense tells us that we just need two keyframes to do the most simple kinds of animation. When uh, you are working with, uh, uh, with objects in motion graphics, you will tend to create like different uh, keyframes like this one or, or like this one okay or like uh, this one and then that's perfectly fine the thing is the more keyframes you add the most uh, the more complex is your animation and sometimes that doesn't mean it looks better you need to learn to do animation as simple as possible and always optimize the number of keyframes. This is similar to when you are designing vectors and you are minimizing the number of anchor points or the number of vortex within your vector. This is the same philosophy. You need to make this as simple as you can. So if you want to do something like this, for example, a little mountain, And if you do that, constructing that with, uh, in this case, all like one, two, three, four, five keyframes, you will see that that's perfectly fine, but it's a little, uh, little dodgy, okay? And that's not what you want, unless really it's something uh, that you were having in mind. No? So the most uh, simple animations would be just optimizing these 
Okay, so you can uh, get rid of this, just select them, delete these keyframes, and then from the first to the second, you just select the path. Here, selecting the position, okay, and uh, you you should be able to uh, create the different uh, paths this way okay and, and then yeah you can get rid of the third one okay so that way uh, we have all here all the animation and then we can move the whole animation so that would be more simple you know more tidy and that is the kind of animations you have to do always try to minimize the number of keyframes so coming back to this animation uh, how many uh, keyframes in relation to position or if you want how many paths you can create but obviously this is uh, this is an infinite number you can do as many paths as you want and as i say before with as many keyframes as you want so it can be very complex What about the other uh, project? The other project, the composition, tells us about time. So I'm going to close this two, and I'm going to come to this one. And if you go to, uh, again, it's about two and a half, a little more. And uh, this is the animation that we have with these different uh, cubes. So what's the difference between these uh, different cubes? Why they are different kinds of animation? They start at the same point in time and they finish at the same point in time. Also, they are following the same path. In spatial terms, they have the same kind of uh, path, this kind of, of movement However, we know they are not moving equally. They are not moving in the same way. It's about time. Just select it uh, one by one and you won't see any difference because as I say, this is only telling you where the first keyframe takes place and when the last one takes place. So in order to see something, we need to go to the keyframes itself. If we go to linear, just the most basic one and you display all the properties you would see in position position is the property we are animating but this can be applied to any other property within the the objects in the timeline of course if you go here you would see um, these two squares these two uh, um, diamonds which are the keyframes and these are linear keyframes okay if you go here to this easy in, which is the second animation, you will see that the first one is similar, but the second one, it is uh, a little arrow. Let's try to have a look at the difference between these two objects. Let's, uh, for example, hide all of those. Uh, it's very easy. You just select all of them. You select this uh, little uh, face is hiding or, you know, uh, showing his face. You hide them. And all of this won't take place until you select this, which is hides all layers with the psi element. And now we have a more simple timeline, which is always good. So we have these two you can also even do more simple if you select P, which is position. Okay, P position, and you can see the difference in terms of keyframe. However, for someone who is not uh, working with After Effects every day, this might not make that sense. Uh, what is the difference between these two lines? The way of seeing that is selecting the property again 
and then go into this icon, which is the graph editor. This tells you that the motion speed is constant. It goes to this speed at this point, and then at the end of the movement here, the speed maintains to 500 pixels per second, which is the space that have moved each second the speed, basically. Okay, 500, it's 516 pixels per second to be more exact. If we select uh, the second, we won't see anything because we are not selecting the property. Select the property, position, and then you will see how the graphic works. Okay, yes, you will see that the speed is changing. It starts in 516 and then goes more, 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 and then decrease, decrease, decrease until zero, which is when it's uh, stopping. By the way, I'm going to uh, hide all of them uh, that are where we are not working with. Just select all of them and hide them. So that way, you know, uh, we see only what we want to see and again. So yeah, if you, you see the difference, you can see that linear is the red one, it's linear, goes constant. But the purple one, Okay, it starts increasing and then decreasing very, very slow. Basically, easy in means that. Easy in means go fast and then decrease very slow. You can now compare the rest of the uh, cubes in terms of keyframes or in terms of graph editor. If you go to EC out, and again, to see this, you might need to select the property itself. So select P, property, and this will be EC out. Okay, EC out will be starting from zero and then going very, 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 very slow to the maximum point. So it is the opposite to EC in, okay? both EC is, it will be a curve, okay, a normal curve where uh, it starts very uh, soft, okay, goes to the maximum and then decrease. And uh, jump and slide, it will be a uh, EC in, but much more exaggerated, okay, it's not soft, it is very suddenly increasing and then decreasing very slowly, okay. And heavy is, it will be similar to this, uh, both easy is, but obviously the form of the shape is slightly different. Okay, so you will see here the maximum point, but the maximum point doesn't last uh, at all. It's really, really, really very, very fast. Have, we can see that uh, just selecting this one, which is the solo, select the solo, and that way. Uh, we can see only this layer and you see that. Okay, very, very fast and then very slow. What about the whole keyframe? If you select the position, you will see the speed is constant, but there is no really movement. What it says is the keyframe would show up at this point here and at this point from here. This is particularly useful when you want to uh, do um, or to work with stop motion, for example, because you don't want interpolation between uh, states. You want just to present a very specific um, object during a time and then change to another object. So if you are, for example, using a stop motion or photographies in a sequence, or you want, for example, to do 2D animation, like uh, simulating cell animation, you really need to work with whole keyframes. You don't want to work with any kind of interpolation because that would clear blurriness, uh, you know, in the transition between objects and would do calculations that it is affecting at the quality of the animation and you don't really want that. 
Again, it depends on what you want to do. All of these um, keyframes are useful. What is this not acceptable to your level is to use always linear animation. In fact, if you think about that, objects won't never move to a constant speed. Okay, so in relation to this whole keyframe that I said before, 